Common Grounds is a nonprofit ministry devoted to creating spaces for Christians to gather so that we may recognize Jesus in one another. We are a unity effort flowing out of the Stone Campbell movement seeking to reimagine the unity plea of our founders. Jesus prayed that we would be one so that the world may believe. Therefore, unity is central to the gospel message and essential for reaching the world for Jesus. Our motto, Unity Starts With a Cup of Coffee, reflects our belief in beginning with relationships. God's Spirit has been moving as we break bread and or share a cup of coffee or beverage with other Christians outside of our family of churches. We are creating and supporting gatherings of unity-minded Christians around the globe. Imagine the good news of these gatherings modeling the prayer of Jesus in our divided world. So we ask you to learn more and join us because unity starts with a cup of coffee. Common Grounds Unity is primarily focused on facilitating in-person gatherings, but we also create digital communities to connect, communicate, and educate about the power of maintaining the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. These platforms serve as pathways for connection, awareness, and prayerful involvement in a local gathering. CGU is not seeking to become a large nonprofit, but rather to be a supporting resource to a grassroots unity effort. We are a bridge connecting people and resources across the streams of our movement and beyond. We believe deep convictions and civil dialogue can coexist even in the presence of diversity and disagreement. We recognize that unity is created by God and not by us. Therefore, our job is to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We do so by surrendering our hearts and minds to what God has done, not to what we have done or to patterns of doctrine or practice we may hold. Sectarian attitudes can be released when we break bread together and see the Spirit of Jesus working in the lives of others. Common Grounds is reaching thousands through our podcasts, Facebook group, website, newsletter, and YouTube channel. Through these connections, we're seeing new gatherings of unity-minded Christians from across the globe. Moreover, we're bringing leaders from around the world together to support, educate, and equip them to facilitate these gatherings. Lastly, we're a resource for spiritual formation for those who are weary, discouraged, and in need of renewal. We invite you to come and see what Common Grounds Unity is doing, and we hope you'll join us as we seek to advance the prayer of Jesus. He says in that prayer in John 17, uh, he, he, he wants us to be one, just as he and the Father are one, so, so that the world might believe. Now, that is an incredible statement. And I grew up in a religious environment where if you just take our movement alone, I, I grew up at a Church of Christ in Lemon Grove, California, and just across the railroad tracks was the Lemon Grove Christian Church. And not far from me in another direction was a congregation with the same name as ours, but you know we didn't fellowship together because of some differences. And then you add to that uh, just all the other uh, denominations that are surrounding that area where I grew up. And, and I used to think to myself, that must be incredibly confusing to people if you have no church background whatsoever. I, I mean, why did this Jesus create so many different groups that can't seem to get along, uh, that can't seem to come together and get on the same page? And why did they let such minor things keep them apart? So I, I saw that in our own heritage, how we how we used to talk about being a unity movement, but we found so many reasons to divide. And I think that was a barrier and is a barrier still today for unbelievers to take seriously the gospel. The church has a clear mandate from Jesus himself for us to be one. And the only way the world will know we're one is if they can see that in how we relate to one another and in our communities. All we can do is really facilitate the opportunities. You know, I, I love that Common Grounds Unity isn't about forcing people to agree with one another, but to create space where that can happen. We're both global and we're, we're local. We have people all over the world um, that are getting on board with this, this movement towards uh, unity among the restoration movement and beyond. Uh, but the focus is that local gathering. The gathering has meant 
meeting people, praying with people, gathering with people you know, from whom I've been disconnected for so many years. I, I heard people say when it comes to different streams within the Stone Campbell movement, wow, I, I met somebody through this gathering and I felt like I'd met a long lost cousin. But I've said since the beginning of this, you know, the, the Lord never created us to be cousins. We're brothers and sisters. And when we gather and have conversation and pray together, we realize that we really have far more in common uh, than we have and hold as far as differences. So that's just been such a rich blessing to gather with people who have a similar heart. I heard something sometime back that people change either because uh, they're desperate enough that they have to, uh, they learn enough that they want to, or they're empowered enough that they're able to. And I think as you look at the decline in Christianity, at least in America, I know it's growing in other parts of the world, uh, there's a desperation. Um, it, it's time to start looking at what we hold in common and pulling together with other believers in a world that so needs our message. For much of my life, we have spent a lot of time talking about one another. Common Grounds Unity creates that space where we talk to one another. And I think that really honors God and, and gets to the heart of what Jesus wants. God didn't ordain one denomination as the church. In some countries, we're people of the book. They don't have an understanding that there are different families of churches. And I like this. We need to carry the name of Jesus and how we believe, how we relate to one another, and put down our allegiance to our particular stream of our movement or any other so that the world can see Jesus and not our denomination. Jesus is calling us to be one. That is the ultimate purpose. First, we stress the gathering. Uh, this isn't just uh, leaders of churches coming and sitting in a lecture hall or somebody buying a book and pulling it off the shelf and you know reading about our history and how unity was one of our first impulses. This is, you know, this is getting folks who are members of congregations as well as ministers in congregations uh, sitting together, uh, sharing together, getting to know one another. So the relational aspect of the gatherings and how that has grown literally around the world, I think, is a unique feature. It is so easy to relativize, dismiss, or even demonize people who disagree with you online. It's so easy to be reactive and and to have this oppositional attitude towards ideas that just pop up on your computer. But when you're sitting around in somebody's living room, uh, sharing a cup of coffee or sharing a meal... And you're looking into their eyes and you can see their love for God. You can see the things that are concerning them. That You can see um, the pictures of their family on the wall. And man, it's just so much harder to hold on to that anger and enmity uh, when you're in that environment. Some of those things just, just melt away and we're able to see Christ in one another, which is one of the main points of Common Grounds. We start with the presupposition that the people we're gathered with or that we're interviewing, they believe that Jesus is Lord. They want their faith and their practice to be informed by Scripture and directed by Scripture. So when you start with those presuppositions, you can have honest conversations about how you come to different conclusions uh, in, in different ways and, and lean in and listen uh, to people who have the same heart for God that at least we, we, we start with that assumption, right, as we do. And that, that helps me a great deal. Well, as Christians, one of the things that we do is try to embrace the gifts of the Spirit, uh, open ourselves up to, to receiving those things that, that only God can give us. Galatians mentioned several of those things, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Those kind of gifts of the Spirit are so crucial to embracing unity. And as Ephesians 4 says, unity is also of the Spirit. It is a gift. And so it, it, it's inseparable. Common Ground's digital presence is important because it can connect people and churches in a local, national, and global context. The church benefits when we model how to have conversations that show our diversity and still displays unity. And the digital presence makes that possible for everybody to access that content. On our podcast, we have been able 
uh, to, to draw such a variety of people who contribute to the conversation, uh, authors, historians, scholars, ministers of local churches, leaders of ministries, and they have been from across all the streams, Christian churches, churches of Christ, international churches of Christ, disciples of Christ. So we have, through this mechanism, uh, been able to introduce uh, people to others and other streams that can be a blessing, P- people that uh, they might have never known, had a common heritage and had so much to offer to their own life. So those are a few of the ways that I think Common Ground Unity uh, brings a unique character to this impulse toward unity and this desire for unity. I've been in rural communities where there's just not a lot of opportunities for those in-person gatherings with with different people, or maybe they've they've lived in an environment that's so sectarian they think it's impossible. Like there's there's just no way to get out of this mindset that is you know all around. But through engaging with common grounds, you're able to see that the world is so much bigger that there are so many unity-minded Christians out there, and you're able to find that common ground with people before you've even met them. I've had the opportunity to interview a lot of folks, and there have been times as I've listened to answers that my own mind and heart has been changed or been expanded in in ways that I uh, may not have anticipated. Some of the guests that we have are those that were not in my orbit before, and because we're talking to them, I'm reading things that they've written, I'm listening to things that they've done, they're opening my mind and eyes to what discipleship looks like in their context. There have been times when I've differed with an answer that a guest has given, but it's been good for me to hear their heart and to hear the thought process that has you know, perhaps led them to, to think about something in the way that they do. Find one person, have coffee with them, get to know them. And that just opens the door for God to work through that relationship and bring unity where before there wasn't any. And then just take it from there and engage with, you know, our podcast, with our newsletters, uh, get in, get involved, maybe host a gathering. There's so many things that you can do down the road, but it all starts with that one relationship in the openness, uh, to the Holy Spirit and what the Spirit is willing to do through you. And and again, I take us back to John 17. If what's in the heart of Christ is the unity of believers, spiritual formation, us being conformed, transformed, shaped more and more into the image of Christ each day uh, with ever-increasing glory will make us have a greater heart for unity. Common Ground's unity embodies the key principle that was at the heart of what brought our churches together in the 19th century in this country, and that is the unity of those who are believers and followers of Jesus Christ. And I want to strongly commend Common Ground's destroying barriers, building bridges, reaching out across divides, and helping us to focus on what unites us as Christians. I strongly support the mission of Common Ground's unity. As someone who works with young people all over the globe, I know for a fact that our youth want us to be unified and they do not want us to be divided. 
but I want to talk to you for a few seconds about Common Grounds Unity, an incredible organization that's actually doing something about the division, particularly among churches in the Stone Campbell tradition, bringing streams of people together in practical, tangible ways, demonstrating relational unity. I am so grateful to have a community, a platform, a place where we can gather around a table together and pursue the unity that Jesus calls us towards. Thank you, Common Grounds, for providing this space for us.